heartfelt greetings to all from Virginia Beach. Um, it's just such a, an honor and privilege to be here and uh, to have so many friends on the, on the call. So, um, so thank you, John, for this uh, kind introduction. And I really want to congratulate you for choosing a topic that is so appropriate for the times we live in um, and the importance of creating, uh, creating in the highest level of consciousness. So um, to go back to the, the past, excuse me, I would like to say that all the years that I've spent in the uh, scientific community um, were amazing years for me. Uh, however, at that time, I was just pursuing a very uh, um, visible um, goals in the visible world. And I did not know at that time that life would present me with major challenges that would force me to go within. At that time too, um, I was not realizing that we continually learn and train at the school of life. So I may be one of those people who seem to learn the hard way, um, um, believing that life is not easy, that success is achieved through a lot of efforts and hard work. And actually, the one of the messages that I would like to um, mention here is that it does not necessarily have to be that way. Um, a lot of it is created through our beliefs. And if we can raise our consciousness to higher levels, um, maybe we can avoid some of these difficulties that many of us go through in life. And actually, um, there is a lot of research in quantum physics uh, at, the, at this time. Um, one of them is from Dr. Joe Dispenza that showed that, you know, this old paradigm of when I get rich, I will do this. When I find the perfect partner, I'll be happy. When I am healthy, I'll be able to do this and that. Uh, is no longer really uh, a good way to create, you know, what we want for us in the future. So this said, um, this presentation is not a lecture. It is simply a sharing of um, some concepts that have become very important to me recently. And um, I would like to share them with you with the hope that they can also help um, some of you see things in a different way because they have allowed me to um, really um, reconsider my perception of God, of myself and of the world. So this is uh, what I have as my intention, um, as lovingly as it can be. And um, I want to, first of all, congratulate and thank Marisa for her beautiful presentation. And um, it's perfect because actually, I would like to add a few things to what she has already uh, presented. So she's the perfect platform for what I would like to share with you. Um, the first thing, by the way, I am not um, doing a PowerPoint presentation. My apologies for that. And I put in the chat some of the four of the topics that I would like to um, cover today. Uh, one is the original soul wound. The second one is creation. The third one is moving into the, in the, the, the second one is consciousness. The third one is moving into creation. 
and the fourth one is the greatest gift. So um, these are the things that hopefully we'll be talking about. The first thing I would like to talk about right now is that notion of the original soul wound, wound, W-O-U-N-D, um, forgive my French accent. So the hurt, the, the tear. And this is exactly what Marisa was referring to in her uh, parable of the prodigal son, which as she said, is an allegory of the soul's journey into the earth plane. And it was a separation, it started with a separation in consciousness from our oneness with God. And we can say that every separation comes with a tear, a tear in the energy, a tear of whatever form, but there is a tear. And at the soul level, there is what, the, what is being called an original soul wound that we have been carrying in us since that time. And it, it is so fundamental that in fact, this original soul wound is, the, is an underlying force or thread that runs in all of our experiences. It colors every single experience that we have, whether we are aware of it or not. So it is really a core thing. And we could maybe define this original soul wound as the wound that the soul experienced when it separated in consciousness from the oneness with God or with source or the maker, however you want to call it. So it is a separation in consciousness, not really in other way, because how, how can you ask a wave to separate from the ocean when it's you know on the ocean? But in consciousness, we did make that separation. The thing is, to, the thing to remember is that wound is very individual. Each person experienced it in his or her own way. And um, I really invite you, if you are interested, to try to connect with this because uh, it is really um, it really colors everything that we experience. For example, some people seem to have an issue with abandonment throughout their lives. Other people feel like they run away. Other people like they have to do everything on their own. And it's a theme that comes back over and over and over in their lives and probably in past lives. And we go through therapy and we work on our issues and certain things cannot be resolved. Well, um, maybe this core issue is something that would be important to address. So at this point, um, we could do a, a, one way to uh, try to figure out what our soul want is is to do a little meditation. And um, uh, John, I would refer to you. I don't know if people, uh, can you put in the chat like yes or one, if that's something we could do it, like try to do a little meditation for five minutes and see uh, what you get, if you get anything. And if some people would like to share, that would be fabulous. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. We can do that. Okay, and, and the thing to remember is, you know, if you don't get anything or if it's not the right time or if you're not ready, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can do it on your own um, later on when you feel more in a better space. Um, so this is what we are going to do. First of all, set our intention that we'll be able to go back all the way back to that moment 
when we experience that separation. And then um, just a few minutes to experience that and feel the emotions because it may be charged with a lot of emotions. Then we'll come back. Um, and if you have a pen and paper handy, um, if you need to write down a few things, you can do that. And it would be wonderful if uh, a couple of people want to share uh, their experience. So um, if uh, you are ready, I would like to invite you to sit comfortably, close your eyes, take some deep breath and set your intention that you will be able to connect with your soul and have your soul take you all the way back to that experience. It can be in your imagination, it can be uh, just follow, just make that connection with your soul and see what you get. So take some deep breath, relax. Take another deep breath. And now try to connect with your soul. And ask your soul to take you back, back, and back, and back, all the way back to that moment when it decided to leave the house of the father. And see if you can experience, live again the whole experience. And you may hear things, sense things, see things, and experience emotions. Let it happen. Imagine as a soul that you are in the presence of God, the Father, and you decide to leave that consciousness. What's your experience?
And now, if you will, we'll slowly come back to the present moment. If you are having an amazing experience, stay there until you are ready to come back. And when you are ready, just open your eyes. Did anyone get any revelation, anything that was helpful? So, so see, that's the good news about this original soul wound. Once we start to re become aware of what it is and say, oh my God, you know, I've been abandoned. Uh, for me, it was, I am on my own. I am on my own. And then what do I do in life? And so these are patterns. Is it true? No, it's not true. It's not true that we are abundant. It's not true that I am on my own. I get so much help from so many directions, but that, that wound in my soul feels like it's a real experience and it's not. So anyway, um, so that's the good news that this can be here. And a way to heal that, uh, you know, might be to go back to that place, to that time, to that experience, and have maybe a little conversation with God and say, like, you know, Marissa explained in the, uh, in the parable, okay, uh, okay, I messed up. Uh, I'm sorry. I, you know, but now, um, you know, what can I do to, you know, change that? And maybe as an offering, you know, as an offering to God, say, okay, this is it. I'm offering you that for you to transmute that. Uh, offerings to God, I had never heard about that, but recently someone talked about that as a powerful way. Instead of saying, let go, let go of problems, offer them to God. And I don't know, it's a fascinating concept that I'm just mentioning in passing, whatever might be good for you. But there are also a few things that I would like to offer is that, that we can really understand who we are in terms of the basic principle of truth. And one of them is we are loved by God unconditionally. Another one is we are whole and one with God. Another one is that we are infinite in God. And that right now, we are already all of it, even if we don't see that in our material, you know, in our physical or whatever world. And as Marisa explained in the parable of the prodigal son, there are two beautiful things that we are received by God. You know, the father was just, I mean, he saw the son and he ran to him. So he received him with open arms. So we are received by God. And what did he do also in the, in the story? He took the golden ring and he got the, the, the most beautiful robe. And then he did that huge feast. So this shows also that we are served by God in the highest way. So if we could only try to focus on these principles that we are loved by God unconditionally, that we are whole and one with God, that we are infinite in God, that we are received by God at any time, that we are served by God at any time. And right now we are already all of it. I think that really can help us switch our perspective to something a little more, you know, hopeful.
Thank you. Um, Elise, we still have about maybe 15 minutes left for your talk. Um, okay. Do you want to hear okay. somebody else's experience or do you just want to continue with your talk? Well, I, I have more, I, unless it's a very interesting uh, something, or maybe could we do that later? Yeah, we'll do it at um, the end. Okay. Yeah, at the end. Okay, because I also want to share something that I think, you know, can help some people. The second thing I would like to talk about is the topic of consciousness. And Marisa uh, has already talk, um, touched that, but consciousness is nowadays a topic that many scientists, researchers, uh, authors are really exploring, including people like Greg Breton, uh, uh, Bruce Lipton, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Dr. Joe Dispenza has done phenomenal work on uh, how we can literally rewire our brain so that we are no longer controlled by all these patterns of behavior that and, and those beliefs, those limiting beliefs that seem to run the show. And he said, you know, we can raise our consciousness above that and then get to choose where we put our consciousness and thus create from a higher level of awareness. So Dr. Dispenza uses meditations and other techniques that, um, you know, to, to reach those um, levels of consciousness, what he calls the quantum field of infinite possibilities. And in that field, everything and anything is possible. And that's a very different perspective than, you know, the old paradigm when, you know, cause and effect as we, you know, we have sown, so now we are going to reap. And so this is, um, you know, this is all the research in uh, quantum, uh, quantum physics. Now, what is consciousness? Um, I'm going to give a very simplistic uh, definition because it's, there, are, there is so much research being done. Um, I would say that consciousness uh, is our awareness of who we are and of our surroundings, basically our relationship to God, to others, to the world, to ourselves. So it's basically an awareness of who we are, our divine nature, and subsequently our ability to choose where we can focus our consciousness. And this is really a key to something big. But before we go there, I would like to talk about something called the ego program. Now, ego in that sense um, is, would be called like the lower self in the KC terminology. And the ego program is something that George Ritchie at the University of Virginia um, found that there is a place in the brain, an area in the brain that uh, contains a set of programs that define our automatic behaviors. So in other words, we could say it's the autopilot. And so these are all tapes that acquired from past lives, from our childhood, education, parents, the media, whatever. So all the things that if someone says something unkind to you, you are going to react automatically or be hurt. I mean, that automatic response that happens without you thinking about it. So most of the time we function on autopilot from this ego program and we react to people and to circumstances based on that ego program. And Joe Dispenza talks a, a lot about that. And he explains that when this happens, in fact, the, uh, the body becomes the mind because it bypasses the mind and the reactions don't even go through the mind. The reactions come directly from that ego program. So, until we consciously choose to how we are going to respond to people and situations and circumstances, 
the ego program is going to run the show. And the thing is, the ego program likes to be in charge. It's going to find all the sneaky ways to tell us that we cannot, that we should not, that it is not safe, that it's all about the no. You can do it, you are not smart enough. You are, this all comes from the ego program. The ego program brings separation. Whenever there is separation, it's not from you. It's not from your higher self. It's that ego program, which is again, all the uh, safety mechanism that in life you have, we have built to kind of maneuver in life. So um, for example, a typical example, uh, you know, we watch something on TV and we see something or a you know, political figure that we don't like. We automatically react or say some you know, things about that, okay? Again, at that point, we need to say, okay, who is in charge here? So um, one thing, one other thing that I would like to mention is this thing about beliefs because the ego program it contains a lot of patterns and habits and beliefs that we have created over time. Now, how are beliefs created? We have an experience. Once the experience repeats, it repeats itself. Well, then it starts to turn into a pattern. Then the, you know, once it happens even more, it turns into a habit. And then the habit turns into a belief. And our beliefs determine our experiences. And this is what we think is our reality. The thing to understand is that most of our beliefs are not based on truth. They are based on experiences that we've had. They are based on stories we tell ourselves. They are based on lies most of the time. For example, you take a little child and the parents say, oh, you need to work more in school. You need to have straight A's. You are lazy. If you don't you know, work harder, you will not get a good job in life. You know, things like that. Well, it's kind of likely that this person may get low self-esteem, maybe you know, all kinds of fears in life and may never find happiness because he's never going to feel like he's good enough or he's smart enough, you know, to find what his heart really wants. Like Ulf was saying earlier, you know, his parents were telling him, you know, you should try to guide him into, and his heart was telling him that, you know, go into the arts and, you know, he followed his heart and that's, that's beautiful. But um, so anyway, I want to make you aware of that sometimes all these things that we have in that ego program and trigger our automatic responses are not even based on truth. They are just things that have been stored there based on experiences and other people's stuff. So how do we, that too is a big one because the ego program is in charge most of the time. So how do we, how do we um, try to improve that? And so uh, again, referring again to Dr. Joe Dispenza because he's very clear about that. He calls that the familiar you. And he says, you know, if you get up in the morning and the familiar you continues to do the same things over and over again, and that have the same patterns at work in the family, what do you think is going to happen during the day? is going to be the same things over and over again. So if you want to create something different, you have to you know, break from that habit. He has a book called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And so one thing that it is a discipline and it's not that hard, this is something that I would like to suggest or you know, offer to you. When anything in life, it becomes almost a game, Oh, who is in charge here? Is it the ego program? Oh yes, Nikki, you, you are here trying to do your thing again, okay? When that happens, just be aware and stop. 
the tricky part most of the time is to stop before we react. And so to be aware, to stop, and then to ask ourselves, how do I want to respond? How do I choose? What do I choose here? And then you follow up with whatever, the action or whatever. But uh, it's a discipline. It's not easy when you have people who trigger, who have a way of pushing your buttons and you, they will really test you on how you do on that. But I found that absolutely fascinating because it's a very freeing thing. We can continue in that ego program. And as Dr. Joe Dispenza says, the ego program will enslave you. It will chain you and force you to stay in that same um, you know, low level of consciousness. So if we want something different, you know, we can try to, you know, become more aware and use our will, knowing that we have the consciousness to choose for ourselves. And now the, the other thing that is extremely important is that our consciousness is everything. This is what the, the researchers in consciousness have found, is that our consciousness is everything and where we put our consciousness is what defines our reality. So basically they even say, what if you, what, where you put your consciousness is what exists for you. If you don't put, where you don't put your consciousness, this does not exist for you, even if it exists for someone else. It seems a little, um, Odd, but this is what they are finding that our consciousness is everything and only what we put our consciousness consciousness on exists for us for example if someone is really in that consciousness of peace and lives at a high level of consciousness for that person they only are in that vibration of peace and other people would be, you know, watching war on the news and everything. But that person, for that person, uh, war does not exist. So anyway, this is kind of challenging for the mind. And we don't really have much time to go deeper into that. But I wanted to challenge your minds, challenge yourselves to, um, you know, maybe with new concepts that you can, um, you know, you can explore. Um, you know, you, there are great, um, you know, Greg Breton, uh, Joe Dispenza, Bruce Lipton are amazing uh, people who um, talk about that all the time. The, the, the important thing is doing that is a way to free ourselves from the ego program and from that familiar you that does not allow us to really create. So now this is the second uh, portion of the, the theme for this conference, creating the future. So if we create from that higher level of consciousness, then as Marisa explained, God created us as companions. We are co-creators with God, but what do we create? Actually, we constantly create, we create positively or negatively we create constructively, we create destructively. And actually it depends on how the ego program uh, works. If the ego program is in charge, well, that's going to be you know, a certain way. But if we can raise our consciousness above the ego and we can choose from that infinite field of that quantum field of infinite possibilities as Dr. Dispenza calls it, well, it's a much higher level of creation. And at that point, we can really soar as, as a soul, as a co-creator with God. So anyway, and even the KC readings say that we have to free ourselves from, you know, from, the, um, from the ego. Now, um, I'm rushing into the rest of the, the um, presentation because the 
Um, okay, there is uh, two more things that I would like to mention. Again, I'm, uh, I know I'm going very fast, but I'm just mentioning the things. Uh, when we talk about creation, there are, this is important. There are two types of orientations. One is called the problem solving orientation. And the other one is called the creative orient, the cre creative creation. The first one is what most of us do all the time. We solve problems. We fix ourselves. We fix others. We, we try to fix others. We fix situations and circumstances. And we are in that loop of constantly trying to improve and fix something. And then there is that creative orientation in which the focus is not on solving anything. It's uh, it, the focus is on creating what you really want, what you really love. And if you think about it, it's a very different vibration. One is fixing things, solving problems. And the other one is creating, creating what you love, creating what you want at a higher level. And most of the time when you are in that creative orientation, it's amazing how the problems themselves, they, they, they're, they find resolution. And sometimes we have to fix problems. If the car breaks down, you have to fix it. But it's this constant thing about we are not good enough and this blame, shame, regret, and all these heavy emotions that we put on ourselves because we are not good enough and we have not achieved that in life and we should have. All of that are very, very heavy emotions to carry through life. And they keep us from creating or receiving even the, the greatest blessing from God. So, um, and actually the, the, the highest uh, level of that is when we can actually create. So not worry too much about the problem solving, create, focus on what you want to create and then create from the higher self, not from what you want you know, in life, not from, but create from the higher, the higher self, from the super conscious. And that's, some people have done work on what they call super conscious creation. And it's an amazing, amazing, amazing concept. I'm not saying I'm doing it. I'm not saying, you know, it's easy to do, but, um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm just sharing with you some things that fascinate me at the moment and that I need to implement in my life. All this to say that the greatest gift I was reflecting on, when John asked me, what is the title of your talk? I just said the greatest gift. And he said, what is the greatest gift? And I said, the gift of life. I mean, it came spontaneously. And if we think about it, uh, we don't own our life. We think we do, but we don't. And our life is actually a gift of every moment from our creator. And it's really the highest form of you know, that's most precious gift. And actually the readings say, uh, for it is in him indeed that you live, that you move and have thy being. So um, life is really in that relationship with God. And as Marisa challenged us to think on, you know, what do we, how do we use that gift? Do we use that gift to satisfy our ego? Do we use that gift to uh, focus on the world? Or do we use that gift to really become the best that we can be, that those real, those co-creators and companions with God that we are meant to be? And, you know, it's, um, uh, you know, I think God wants us to live in love, in joy, to live with passion. And also one thing that I would like to um, share with you 
is that thing of saying yes to life. And um, most of the time in that old paradigm of um, the ego program, we say, oh, we don't want to be sick again. We, you know, we are poor and we don't want poverty, this and that. It's always about what we don't want. And true creation is actually not saying no to what we don't want, but saying yes, or an infinite yes to what we want. Like, not don't say, well, um, you know, I don't want to be sick. Well, you know, say an infinite yes to health and vitality. Say an infinite yes to, to um, wealth and, and, you know, abundance. Say an infinite yes to harmonious relationships. If we could, even as a game, even as an exercise, to, you know, open ourselves to those infinite yeses that we want in our lives, they may not manifest immediately, they may, whatever, I don't know. But at least it's a very different level of consciousness. And since our consciousness is everything and where we put our consciousness defines our reality, um, we know that if we stay in that uh, vibration, it's going to be much better than to focus on all the things we don't want and all the things that we've been struggling with. So my conclusion is, I really would like to invite you to go within, do the inner work because that's the, 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 the starting point to really becoming, you know, the super conscious creators that will allow us to be the companions with God that we are meant to be. Thank you. I love you all. <laughs>